What's up guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. I'm just gonna try to sneak in an early morning test today. I've got three of those same Victorinox kitchen knives that I used for my first test on the best machine and I've sharpened them with all of my fine stones. So I've sharpened them with the 800 grit Veneve, uh, the 1200 grit Easy Lap diamond plate, the Spyderco Ultra Fine, and then I also threw in a knife that is sharpened with the 250 grit Easy Lap stone. And that'll be more of a direct comparison of the level of coarseness of the coarse side of the dual grit edge. So I'll cut the chatter and we'll get to testing. I'm trying to sneak one in in the early morning and it's beautiful out here. So I hope you enjoy the scenery behind me and we'll get started.
Well, the Spyderco Ultrafine is lasting just about until eternity, and I am very surprised. It's kind of cool, but I don't know what's going on. There's a chance that the combination of the Spyderco Ultrafine and a cardboard strop produced a very clean apex that is hard to uh, wear away. But I am going to go in and have some breakfast and leave this stuff here and then come back out and see if we can wrap up this uh, test on this guy. Very interesting. Well, I've done this test and I'm looking at the data and it's about 275 cuts before the Spyderco Ultrafine actually crosses the line of 400 grams of best pressure. And I'm trying to reason it out. I think there's a couple things that are possible. One thing that's possible is that I'm getting more efficient in the way that I'm slicing and so it's not dulling quite as fast. Another thing that's possible is that the idea that the BESS will give you an accurate reading just of the thickness of the apex maybe is not a theory that's quite on point. Another thing that's possible is that the Spyderco Ultra Fine Stone is really awesome or it produces a dual grid effect which is maybe even better than uh, the stones that I've been using. I would be surprised, but I, I guess I can't write it off as a possibility. And another thing that's possible is that the interaction of cutting down into through the rope and into the wood um, is affecting the apex somehow because the numbers actually vary a lot. Like the initial number is around the 250 mark, but it hits a number around the, it hits a number after a hundred cuts that's better than the original number. And that seems sort of mind boggling. I think that the thing that's most likely it, that I didn't think through is that my testing method maybe isn't the most precise. And what I mean is that when Pete dulls a knife, he checks the entire edge to see if there's edge damage in any particular area. And now that I think of it, of course, edges are going to chip and dull at specific little points and be much more dull there than the rest of the edge. Now the best machine is awesome and it's super precise, but it only gauges this like one fourth of a millimeter, you know, the, only the spot where the wire hits. And so it's possible that those big jumps in my best numbers, I'm actually hitting a spot in an irregular edge and it's one of the more dull spots. And then even, even my Sharpie mark, like the, where I'm trying to get the best reading on is wider itself than the line itself. And so it's possible that just a few, um, tenths or hundredths of an inch this way would produce a slightly different best number. I would imagine that, I'll, I'll throw up a graph here, 
and you see that the Spyderco Ultra Fine, um, according to this test, you know, rough as it is, um, initially produces something very unsurprising. It looks pretty much like you'd expect it to look. It doesn't get quite as sharp as the dual grid edge. And then it, it kind of continues, other than this one aberration, this downward slope. The perplexing thing is that after 120 cuts, it revives itself up to, you know, the 220, 230 grams of force region for quite some time. And, um... So I think the overall downward slope trend is an indicator of the wear, and the jumps and aberrations are probably indicative that those measurements came from a slightly different portion of the edge, and you have two pieces of edge dulling at different rates. Um, other than that, I'm not sure what could be happening. We're into the, the realm of the nano mechanics of the edge a little bit, and so I'm, I'm wondering if this test is going to produce any useful data. <laughs> But I think that the only way to really find out is to continue using it for a couple more tests and to, to cross compare the results. Maybe even going back to a dual grit edge or maybe even eliminating some of the variables, you know, maybe putting the rope in a clamp so that I cut through it and then go into air rather than into cutting board or something like that. Or finding a more precise way to mark the edge and making sure that we take markings at as close to the same point as possible. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna cut off the video here because it's gotten long enough and my hands are so sore. <laughs> Pizza beast for doing this uh, 1200 cuts, 2000 cuts. My gosh, that must have been a monster, Pete. I'll put out another video test, trying to test the other three and we'll cross compare the results and see if we can come to any conclusions. Anyway, thanks for being along on this crazy pseudoscientific roller coaster ride with me. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'm having heaps of fun, even if I am wrong about everything. I feel like in the end of this, we're going to learn a lot about sharpening and, and edge mechanics when all is said and done. So you know, take care, guys, and I'll just say peace out from the home slice. Bye, guys.